Hello, in this uh, tutorial I'm going to be covering how to set up your very own uh, character, well the face of a character, uh, reference box. Um, so you're going to have something that looks something like this, um, kind of a hollowed out box where you have the front and the side view of a face. Um, and to ensure that it lines up as well, because uh, there's nothing more frustrating than having reference images that don't line up because if they don't line up then it means you won't have an accurate model so the first step before you start to you know even think of modeling or bringing anything into 3ds max you know setting up a reference box is you need to um, find your reference images so if I open up Photoshop what I found is I found a front image of Natalie Portman I thought, you know, I've made enough male characters in the past that I thought I'd give making a female character a go. Um, so I found an image which was pretty dead on uh, from the front, and it'll only work if you find an image which is kind of front view uh, as flat as possible, yeah, so there's less camera angle as possible. Also found a side view. Now, you know, you can see that they are different, you know, the one's black and white, one's colour, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to try and line it up as best we can and kind of go from there. So the main areas that you want to look to line up are, you know, the, the eyes, the nose, uh, the lips and the chin. So the first thing I'll do is make my top layer, which is the layer with um, the side view, make that semi-transparent. And the way you can do that is just here on your layers tab you'll have opacity and you can change the opacity from 100 down to about 50 percent or so and then you can see you know we've got your semi-transparent side view and you can go in and try and line this up now now straight from the start i can see that that's okay you know if i line up the eye like so the lips seem to line up okay uh, but the nose doesn't doesn't line up very well at all. If you look at the nostril area, it just doesn't line up. So from my sort of, from me playing around with it, because I've already done this before, I realised that in, in this view here, her head is actually tilted a little bit down. And you can tell that because of the way that her eyes are looking um, at you. So she's not looking straight on, she's kind of looking a little up. It's <laughs> a little hard to see maybe but after a lot of analysis I've realised that I need to rotate um, my side view a little bit like so so not too much but just, just a little bit and that's, that's going to help change the angle and make everything fit a little better so again you want to kind of line up the sides of the lips as well so the, the sides of the lips the corner of the eye they're probably the two markers that you'd probably want to stick to before kind of going any further. I think they line up pretty well. You know, they, they don't have to overlap exactly right. All you're look, looking for at this stage is that they are actually in line. So they're across the horizontal line. You know, they, they do kind of hit each other. And I think that's pretty accurate at this stage. I think that's quite good actually. The nostrils are looking a lot better as well. Uh, on this particular blueprint, uh, blueprint, the eyebrows don't tend to line up too well. And again, I think that's because her head's at an angle. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to focus on her actual facial features. Um, so once I'm happy and I think you know it's lining up okay and it's good enough for me to go in and model, I'm going to then put the opacity back to 100. I'm going to then click on the picture with my mouse tool and then hold shift and then just press the right arrow on the keyboard and that's going to push that across so it's kind of in the middle like this so they're over overlapping. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to crop this image um, and the way that I tend to find it easier to work with is um, the way that I tend to use um, re reference images are in a box so I need to ensure that my reference pictures are 
you know, square, that they're exactly square. I don't want to have a rectangle, then it's going to kind of get distorted when I take it into 3ds Max and apply it to a box, it's going to squish it in. So what I need to do then is click on my crop tool, which is the fifth icon down on your toolbar here. So you, you click on the crop tool, and then the key is you hold shift. So you hold shift, and then you drag out. And can you see how it's kind of ensuring that it's staying as a square? That's, that's really important just there. So we're just going to draw that out. Again, you can kind of move this across if you like and press enter. Now that's cropped as an exact square. I'm just going to make sure that it has got the face in there perfect. They still are going to line up because I know they will because I've checked them. Uh, and then it's just a case of saving one at a time. So this one I'll save as, um, you know, file, save. I'm just going to save them as JPEGs. Now I've al already saved them, but you just kind of make a folder, um, you know, with the uh, subject like for me it's Nas Natalie Portman but for you it could be it could be yourself it could be any random character it could be any random person so you want to make sure you create a folder so you can place all that work within there and then reference images and then save that as side and then repeat the process for the front view here and save that as front so great you've just set up your reference images and the next step is to go into 3ds Max so let me just delete that and I'm going to start again from scratch and if you've seen my earlier videos you'll understand that reset will reset my whole uh, 3ds Max all the settings all the textures that I've used they'll be reset and cleared do I really want to reset yes I do so from this stage I just create a box so click onto box draw out a rough a rough box and then I'm just going to change the length and the width and height all to 80. I mean you could you could set it to 50 it doesn't really matter but you want to make sure that they're all the same value so it is an exact box it's not rectangular. Again you know before I model I always configure my viewport so um, I hit this plus go to configure you want to enable edge faces and disable selection brackets and ensure you're applying it to all viewports and press OK. The next step is to right click on your box, go to object properties and select back face cull. Now what back face cull it does is it's going to allow um, polygons that are facing away to be invisible and you're going to understand what that does in, in a moment. So we go in our modern modify tab we add an edit mesh. We go to polygon. We select all the polygons and scroll down to where it says normals and flip. So we're going to flip those normals. And because we did a back back face cut earlier, all the polys that are facing away, they look transparent, completely transparent, which is really good and really useful. So the the, the next step is to apply our textures. So we click on, in our front view, uh, the polygon which is facing us and that's where we want to put the front view of our character. So we go to our material editor under rendering, compact material editor, click on a material, go to maps, then diffuse color, then double click bitmap and I'm going to double click the front view. You want to ensure you go to parent then apply sign material to selection and then this icon here which is to show the map in the viewport and we're just going to repeat the same process for the side so we're going to ensure that in our left view we're going to select the polygon which is facing us we're going to go to a new material and it's the same process so you know that's pretty much how we um, set up a reference image go to parent apply it make it visible that's actually back to front for me so I'm gonna flip that so it's facing the other way so the way you do that is you click on your map and here under angle you change the V to 180 and that's gonna change yeah so that's it that concludes the uh, 
uh, reference box and hopefully it was helpful and in the next video um, you will see how to